In terms of insurance policies, an indemnity is an arrangement between an individual or business and an insurance company. Indemnity insurance covers a policyholder against unexpected damages and potential legal costs. Many different types of insurance indemnify individuals from potential costs or losses in the future. We will now take a look at indemnities in more detail and when you may need one. Different types of insurance indemnities when looking at an insurance indemnity policy, it should be considered in the same fashion as, for example, home insurance. If you were to experience a fire in your home, then your home insurance would indemnify you from the cost of replacing goods repairing the damage. In effect, any insurance policy is a type of indemnity because it indemnifies the policyholder from associated expenses. However, there is a sector that addresses both personal and business indemnities for particular scenarios. Personal indemnity insurance One of the more common types of personal indemnity insurance relates to the sale of a property. We will cover this in more detail in a moment, but this type of cover can be a handy safety net. For example, say you were holding a party in your garden, and someone was injured due to negligence. Personal injury insurance would indemnify you from any compensation or legal costs. Professional indemnity insurance Professional indemnity insurance is a massive market in the UK, offering cover for those found to be negligent or causing losses for their clients in a business capacity. Professional indemnity insurance is different to business indemnity insurance, as it covers the actions of the individual. This type of insurance is also crucial for medical professionals where negligence claims and costs can be significant. Business indemnity insurance as the term suggests, business indemnity insurance covers the cost of negligence claims and compensation against a business. This type of insurance can prove extremely valuable for large and relatively small companies, where a sizable compensation claim could bankrupt them. However, seen by some as a waste of money, the value of indemnity insurance will only become apparent when you need to make a claim. Property indemnity insurance Even though the annual growth in UK house prices slowed slightly in July, the average cost of a home in the UK now stands at an pound, 244229. Consequently, the purchase of a home will likely be the most significant investment by the majority of people in their lifetime. Therefore, it stands to reason that buyers and mortgage providers will leave no stone unturned to arrange cover for unexpected and potentially costly issues further down the line. But, believe us, many potential problems can arise out of nowhere. What does indemnity insurance cover? The majority of property-related indemnity insurance will be taken out as a consequence of potential problems already identified. These include issues such as planning permission Many of us automatically assume that extensions and structural changes to a property have been carried out after receiving planning permission. This may not be the case, but unless the seller can provide documentation, this can create doubt and potential risk. Therefore, indemnity insurance can be arranged, covering the cost of potential losses or issues further down the line. If, for example, the extension to a property you acquired did not receive planning permission, this could cause serious issues. Local authorities may be able to insist that the property is returned to its former structure. Even if retrospective planning permission was given, this could attract high costs concerning legal and architectural advice. Building regulations While building regulations can change regularly, builders should be aware of the rules and ensure their work takes these into account. On the other hand, if individuals have undertaken work within their home that does not abide by building regulations, there could be severe consequences. The use of indemnity insurance cover will fund any remedial work required or any action taken by the local authorities. Restrictive covenants keeping track of all building work in homes across the UK is challenging to say the least. Tracking the issue of restrictive covenants can prove even more difficult. It may only be after you have purchased a home that you learn about breaches of restrictive covenants. This type of issue often refers to unauthorized extensions, which can be costly to rectify. If forced to knock down an extension, there's the cost of the work to consider and a reduction in your home's value. Access issues Most neighbors tend to work hand in hand for matters like access, even if this infringes slightly on an individual's land. The problem is that your future neighbors may not be as accommodating, 
and problems can arise regarding access to drains or the use of a driveway, for example. This type of scenario could incur steep legal costs and even impact the value of a home. Unfortunately, many people fail to look ahead to potential issues with access, welcoming and appreciative of their current neighbors, deeds and land registry documentation while most homeowners will ensure that their deeds and land registry documents are held in a safe place, this isn't always the case. In addition, locating or providing replacement documents can prove time-consuming and relatively expensive. Yet, these documents are critical, and while there are many ways they can be stored securely, not everybody seems to appreciate their value. Legal claim on your land you must retain necessary documentation showing boundaries to your property, historical changes and your rights of access. For example, if someone were to make a legal claim on your land, you would need to provide the relevant documentation to support your position. Missing documentation can lead to expensive legal costs and other expenses. Consequently, many solicitors will recommend taking out indemnity insurance to give their clients peace of mind. Who arranges indemnity insurance on a property? This is an interesting subject and one which is considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Traditionally, as the buyer is undertaking a significant investment to acquire a home, they tend to be more proactive concerning indemnity insurance cover. However, on the flip side of the coin, you may find that a seller is desperate to complete and therefore purchase indemnity insurance to encourage a buyer to close the deal. There will also be occasions where the buyer may persuade the seller to cover part of any indemnity insurance costs. After all, both parties have a vested interest in completing the sale as soon as possible. What happens to the indemnity insurance if I sell the property? When we acquire traditional insurance policies, they are specific to an individual. It can be very different when it comes to indemnity insurance, especially where property is involved. Many people will not be aware, but indemnity insurance is tied to the property, not the owners. Consequently, if you have taken out indemnity insurance in the past, then this will transfer to buyers in the future when they take ownership of the property. How long does indemnity insurance last? Typically, indemnity insurance on a property will last indefinitely. However, it is essential to be aware of the fine print of any indemnity insurance when acquiring a property, or any other scenario. For example, there may be some small print in the policy that triggers an additional premium if an asset reaches a specific value. Unless this premium is paid, you may find that you are no longer indemnified against financial losses. In an interesting and potentially costly quirk, some indemnity insurance policies will be invalidated if you reveal potential issues to third parties. The best example of this would be indemnity insurance purchased as a consequence of potential planning permission issues. If you are aware of potential problems upon purchase and applied for retrospective planning permission, this would alert third parties in the shape of the local authorities. Consequently, you would likely find that your cover lapses, and you may well be exposed to costs associated with any subsequent legal action. How much does indemnity insurance cost? This question is akin to an quo, how long is a piece of string? And requo, the first thing to remember is that indemnity insurance incurs a one-off payment with no monthly premiums. So, depending upon the purpose of insurance, this one-off premium could be less than an pound, 100 up to several hundred pounds and beyond. When looking at indemnity insurance, it is crucial that you take professional financial advice. This will ensure that you get the best deal possible and the most relevant cover for your situation. Cutting corners and cutting costs may save you a few pounds in the short term, but it can prove extremely costly in the long term. Do I need property indemnity insurance? Many insurance policies are often seen as an expense until you need them when they can quickly become the best investment ever. There are two main issues to consider when looking at property indemnity insurance and whether it is worth it, protecting your investment as we touched on above, for the vast majority of people, purchasing their home will be their largest ever investment. Quite why you would not wish to protect and cover this investment from unexpected issues in the future is difficult to understand. We have seen some property-related problems lead to a significant reduction in the family home's value. Can you afford to take the risk, raising finance if you put yourself in the shoes of your mortgage provider, they will prefer, or insist, on the relevant cover being in place.
The simplest example is a lack of planning permission leading to an extension being knocked down. This would have a significant impact on the value of your home, with potential repercussions for your mortgage. Let us assume that your property was worth an pound, 200, 000, with an outstanding mortgage of an pound, 160, 000. This equates to a mortgage loan to value ratio of 80%. In this scenario, there is a significant gap between your outstanding mortgage and the value of your property. However, if an extension was built without planning permission and the local authorities insisted it was knocked down, this would impact the value of your home. In this scenario, let's assume the value fell to an pound, 150, 000. With a n pound, 160, 000 mortgage outstanding, the loan to value ratio is now 107%. This means that if you were to default on your mortgage, the property's value would not cover your liability. This is why mortgage providers are highly proactive when it comes to indemnity insurance, the real value of indemnity insurance like any insurance, many people view indemnity insurance premiums as just another added expense until they need them. Whether looking at personal, professional, or business indemnity insurance, this subject requires due consideration. As they are a means of providing cover for issues that may or may not ever happen, you never know when you may need them. However, the value of this safety net should never be underestimated.